Hi. I am actually quite surprised by the amount of views my last video got. Thank you for that. And I've been transforming my life lately, so I hope you will enjoy this video. It is a bit different as I am merging my passions together, which are music, cinematography and woodworking, obviously. Today we're building a box which is 50 by 30 by 15. And this is a toolbox that will serve the purpose to help me while I build my home. I am working on making the rough cuts for my pieces and this is quite an improvised project. I know what I want to do but I'm not sure how to do it. So there's some trial and error and if you are new here you will notice that I do like to use hand tools quite often as I do feel there's a deeper connection with the wood but I obviously also use power tools to speed up the process in some cases. Here I am actually squaring the edge by hand and I'm just looking. You can obviously use multiple techniques for this. I trust my sight for this purpose. I don't have a jointer but I do have a planer so by planing one side uh, like I'm doing right now you can get a flat face and use it as a reference for a normal planer. At this point I know that one side is flat so I can just put it on my planer and adjust it to the right depth. At this time I was actually missing the right blade for my Makita Bandso, but I decided to still cut some of my larger pieces of wood into thinner strips. I actually don't recommend to do this, it's quite sketchy and it can be dangerous, so beware. This is the end result of an hour of cutting and planing. I only had a few pieces missing before I could start assembling and doing the joinery. This whole build took 24 hours of actual work. It was quite interesting because I was able to build it on the spot. Normally I sort of pre-plan what I want to do and in this case I decided to just go with the flow. And the video editing of this video is a little bit like that too. It's more personal. I will add some music and I will let you enjoy, if it's enjoyable, some parts without me talking. It's self-explanatory and I hope that you find that entertaining. And please let me know if you have any thoughts or comments.
it comes to the joinery, I love doing it by hand. There's something about it that feels genuine. Once again, I'm not here to debate about power tools. It's just how I feel. And I think I want to try to capture that through this video. As you could see there, I was actually prepping my workbench so that it's not rough, so I can chisel and not damage the wood. Sometimes there's little pieces that when you hit, it can actually damage it. I love Japanese tools. I think the fact that they are forged by hand makes me also feel more aligned with my work. They're expensive, but these are tools that will outlive me. This is Booby, and we live together. He's always around, and he's my best friend. I must admit that doing this by hand is long, but I insist on the fact that it's so satisfying. Sometimes I just want to rush it, but you can't. And that's something that this teaches you. You have to go through that process.
when I was doing these dovetails, I was a bit more open on my cuts because I decided that I wanted to glue this piece. My previous piece is doesn't use glue for the dovetails. But here, as it's a toolbox, I wasn't feeling fully confident on not using any glue. So the precision is not as good as the previous one. But that was actually intentional. I didn't want to be test fitting for hours every dovetail. This is probably the most common tip out there in terms of filling the gaps, which is just, just using sawdust. It's very efficient. I use a brush and I spread it with the glue. And it makes it easier to fill the holes. The brush is really helpful actually. It puts pressure on the tiny holes and it fills it quite neatly. I did a small mistake on my last piece. I didn't check if it was square. It was pretty square, but not fully square. So when I put the cover, I had to adjust it and make it not square to fit the box. So this time I avoided that. And it just makes the process much easier. For the gluing process, I don't use dominoes. I actually just use glue. For me it works as I put pressure from the bottom and the top to keep it flat and then I do hand planing and it usually works for me. Now I'm using my square box to mark the edges onto my glued pieces. This will become the bottom of the box. With my biggest chisel, I mark the line of the scribble to prepare the depth of the contour that I will afterwards glue. You can do this with a router in matters of seconds, but I was trying different techniques to see how doable it was. This time I got lucky and it was a perfect fit. You just have to make sure to have many clamps and put pressure in as many points as possible so that the glue really bonds with the two pieces. Now I'm starting to make the handle. This is walnut and I use brand new sauce and a recently sharpened chisel. I hope you enjoy the next sequence.
I did wait a full day before I started shaving these edges to make them flush. I don't tend to rush the gluing process because where I live it can get quite cold in the winter. This is a complicated part because I was designing the handle and the way everything was going to fit together just by improvising. And I thought it was worth mentioning that this took probably like two hours of doubt. I am measuring the different thicknesses and marking them so that the handle feels balanced. This tool I had no idea actually existed in this shape, but I restored it from what my grandpa left me. My grandpa used to be a woodworker in his free time, and I never actually met him when I was old doing that, so restoring his tools feel like something I had to do. Using a small wooden block to be perpendicular to it helps the chisel to have cleaner cuts. I only use it when I need extreme precision. If you've been hanging out all this time, I'm actually really grateful. And for the curious ones, this is a new phase in my life. I've been woodworking only for two years. And I used to be a music producer. I still am, but the pace is changing. Woodworking though has given me a new perspective on tradition, 
time and the way you transform something into an object that will last maybe hundreds of years and that's something that is hard to explain and I guess that's just the passion for it thanks for being part of the journey After some thought and re-watching the footage, I could have done this in a much easier way, but on the moment this seemed right, but I could have shaved with a different type of like carving knife the handle instead of sewing and chiseling. But you live and learn as they say. I've had this idea in which I wanted to add texture into my pieces. I explored this technique, which is time consuming, but I think I like it, not convinced yet about the result. Another thing I've been experimenting with is drilling by hand. It's much easier than it seems and this seemed to be the right project to practice with. small pegs that will be locking points on the joinery.
I was about to not leave that part on the video, but if you notice, there's a big mistake on the routing bit that I used. I wanted to round it off the edge, and I did a round off with a sharp 90 degree border. That's probably the biggest mistake in the whole project, but I was able to fix it with a rounded bit that was bigger radius. I am using the marking knife to do a precise mark so I know how much I have to shave with my planer. What I've learned from hand tools is that sometimes the jobs that seem hard are actually so much easier with hand tools. So I encourage you to explore if you are interested because, for example, adjusting the right height on that board for the separation on the toolbox is much easier if you just do some shavings, three or four instead of grabbing a table saw and cutting that right amount. It's no dust, fast, not loud, and actually extremely precise. This video was shot in winter and it was raining for weeks, literally. So as soon as there was some sun, I felt no other choice than to go outside and work outside. That's why at some shots I'm outside. When hammering handmade pegs, you have to be very careful with thin pieces. If you force it too much because the peg is handmade and it's not precise, well, mines aren't, you can split the wood. So you have to go slow and observe and be attentive. For this piece, I decided to use tangoil. You have to wait a long time for it to dry, but it has a beautiful finish. Watch all the way, I'm really grateful and I hope you enjoy this short film. Now onto the final reveal and I hope I'll see you in my next video.